You've heard about the game Ridley and friends are building. Free State aims to be a simple but deep MMO war game. A time sink with a cute variety and severe customization. But as you can see, I'm not even tech savvy enough to make a good screen cap. So, I need your help implementing this project. Visit freestategame.com to make contact and play the pre-alpha demo. Freestategame.com You can play it almost any way you want. Old science fiction tends to be at its best when it makes really bold predictions about the present. The fact is, no matter how unrealized a, a prediction, the long-dead author could just say, well, it hasn't happened yet. Just because I made it sound like something would be a certain way by the year 2010 and it didn't happen, well, it doesn't mean it couldn't happen later. On the other hand, old science fiction tends to be at its worst when it assumes certain technologies will stay the same or improve only a small amount. So, for example, you got Stanley, uh, not Stanley Kubrick, but uh, Arthur C. Clarke with 2001. He completely overrated the progress of computer intelligence and completed, completely overrated, overestimated the progress of human space travel. However, it's very likely by, that by the year 2050, we will be seeing the kinds of things that Arthur C. Clarke expected would happen in 2001. Space probably will look, space travel will probably look a lot like what he imagined in the 60s. Contrast that with the almost science-free science fiction of Orson Scott Card. He's a great writer, and maybe I'm being a little unfair. His books do have science in them. It's just that there's not much imagination about the way science will progress in the future. His galaxies of humans, or many dozens of worlds populated by humans, tend to just be recreations of Brazil or ancient Rome. And there's not much different about the people from the ones you'd meet in modern life. The technology barely even comes up as a theme in the book. Out of a handful of people who in the course of one desperate night fought off an unknown, unseen menace from another world. But what is it that leads so many science fiction authors to get it so wrong and so many others to get it so right? I suspect it may be something that they're not even consciously aware of. Something you or I could use to predict with some accuracy the technological future. To know how things will be in the future, you mostly just need to ask yourself, what is it people want? Assuming no general apocalypse interrupts technological progress, now the simple answer is that they will have the technologies they want that provide them the things they want. It's hard to say when. Government regulation has, for instance, slowed down the advent of, of Stanley Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke's predictions. But since he knew people would eventually want to live on the moon and they would eventually want to travel to Jupiter, he could make those predictions. So in the same way, I think a person with less of a, I mean, Arthur C. Clarke was a, uh, a scientist of sorts, so a lot of his scientific predictions were scientific. But you, you should be able to figure out for, the, for yourself what the future will be like by asking that question, what do people want? So I'm going to try to answer that question myself, uh, not being a scientist, but just looking at the history and the basic understanding of what a lot of people want. What is the main thing that people on Earth want? Probably at the top of the list is sex, especially for males. So we can extrapolate from that, for instance, that in the future, maybe not the near future, but eventually, technology will rise to answer that demand in the most satisfying possible way and that will sooner or later have a big impact on human relationships so for instance in our Orson Scott card novel where you have people being completely the same as they are now hundreds of years in the future 
relationships drive the whole story. But, like so many science fiction authors, it's the things he takes for granted, the things he assumes will stay the same, that make his science fiction scenarios hard to swallow, hard to believe. It could be that in the year 2300 or 2400, no one really cares what the opposite sex thinks of them, because they can always create the kind of partner they want, virtually. And technology would bring the virtual being into physical existence. FreeStateGame.com bum, 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 bum. You can play it almost any way you want.